Okay, I will be very slow and very simple. I do not want uh, to say all what I did, but I say, I'll say the most important thing is the most important guy would like to be useful for you so that you will not, I hope, uh, you will not uh, regret about, uh, uh, about this uh, uh, lecture. Uh, well, so I'll be very simple and sorry for those who know uh, this stuff, but maybe I'll explain to everyone some, something about the title. No, well, uh, uh, first thing, here are two, three, five distributions. Everybody who is here knows what is it. It is uh, just uh, two, three, five, so those weapons maximal for two, five distributions. And in the third lecture, I will tell also about uh, three, five distributions, uh, some results, first results, and I'll explain that the problem of classification of three, five distributions is enormously much more difficult than the difficult problem of classification of two, three, five distributions, because the square root of three, five distribution is a two, three, a two, five distribution, but not necessarily two, three. Uh, additional title is 111 years after the transfer variables paper. I have, uh, we understand, a lot of files uh, in my uh, computers uh, uh, and uh, with different, uh, with the same title, but this number changes. I started with 100 uh, years, uh, but then I had 105, uh, 108, uh, but uh, Recently, a week ago or so, two weeks ago, Richard Montgomery uh, gave a talk in a seminar also organized by, uh, in Warsaw, by Voices in Princeton. Uh, well, uh, and uh, his title, uh, it, was, it was about M body problem, as the original title was 333 uh, years after something, after probably this problem was posed. Uh, well, so I think I decided that 111 looks as nice as uh, 336. Uh, hopefully, it will be the last we will publish in the final batch. Okay. Uh, all those who dealt uh, with two, three, five distributions uh, know that uh, we do need Cartan uh, tensor. It is unavoidable. It could be replaced by something. Equivalent figure, uh, for example, replaces it, replace it by what he called fundamental form, uh, 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 but uh, it is equivalent. It is equivalent. Uh, uh, well, uh, but we do, the fact that we need Cartan uh, tensor without it, there is no way to answer the. One of the most important questions is a 2 c 5 distribution is flat or not flat? And it is a crucial question, and you know, many people here who have an experience know that it is a difficult question which can be solved with Cartan question and Cartan tender. Uh, and uh, without it, uh, only in some particular cases uh, when we know that distribution is homogeneous, and we know it's symmetries, uh, they call it some algebra. And when we have to see if it's uh, such an algebra, it's a subalgebra with G2 or not, which is, but even in this case, it is equivalent to fighting Cartan tensor. And if we do not know a priori, there are no visible symmetries, then Cartan tensor is uh, the only way flat. Uh, so uh, there are many equivalent definitions of flat 2 C5 distributions, and uh, uh, I will give one of them. Uh, well, uh, using it because I want to formulate one of the definitions that you know what I in formulation, I want to use one of my tools which will be uh, used uh, mainly on the second lecture about homogeneous distributions. So, this tool uh, is uh, and dropped uh, and dropped transitive algebra. I will uh, what I call and drop uh, transitive algebra, but uh, today I need uh, uh, it is. Uh, of any dimension starting from five and of uh, algebra, but uh, now I need just very simple definition of and dropped uh, five dimensional algebra. 
so what do I mean by dog fighting? When Shah algebra is simply a Lie algebra and dog is a generating plane, a two-step generating. Uh, so uh, P is spanned by two vectors, and these five vectors must be linearly independent. Uh, so then, so this, in this case, uh, the pair AP, uh, I call it uh, uh, a dog five-dimensional algebra. Uh, it is very convenient, at least for me, uh, maybe for other people too, to describe such an adult five dimensional algebra uh, by a 3 5 matrix. The following matrix we take uh, the bracket A1 and A4, this one, A1 and 3, and write it as a linear combination of the basis A1, A5. And we do the same for A1, A5, which is the same by the copy identity as A2, A4. N2, A2, and 5 In the same, in this way, we obtain a 3 by 5 matrix, and it com this matrix completely describes the endowed algebra, the pair A and P, because all other structure equations, for example, A3 of A4, or A4, A5, or A3, A5, they follow from these uh, equations and the Jacobi idea. Uh, well, uh, maybe I don't need it today, but uh, since I mentioned this characteristic matrix, I will, I should say that uh, it is not arbitrary three by five matrices. Uh, this Jacobi identity are a uh, certain obstacle. Uh, not any three by five matrix uh, is realized uh, as uh, a characteristic matrix of some dog five dimensional algebra, but uh, well, uh, but what is can be three is the last two columns, the last two columns of this matrix. Uh, so R14, R15, R24, R25, R34, I35. Uh, this uh, three by two matrix uh, can be the last two columns of this matrix. It can be ar absolutely arbitrary. Uh, well, I call it, I will call it reduced statistic matrix, and it will be uh, also very important. Thing. But now, uh, okay, so now. Uh, Misha, why this uh, I1, I1, four and yeah. I2, five, uh, I1, five and A, A2, four are the same? Why? Because of the Jacobian identity. Uh, Just look at it. A1, A5 is the Lie bracket of A1 and A2 is and the Lie bracket of A2, A3. A, A2, A4 is the Lie bracket okay, of okay. A2, uh, A1, A3. The copy identity implies that they are always equal. Okay. Uh, okay, so now, as soon as you have any uh, M2 five dimensional algebra, uh, it induces a homogeneous distribution, uh, at least locally, in a neighborhood of identity of the Lie group G of the algebra A. Uh, so, because uh, this P defines, uh, can be, uh, uh, this P can be interpreted uh, as uh, two plane in the tangent uh, space. It identity to the Lie group, so we have two plane here, and we can push it forward uh, by the flows of left invariant vector fields on G. At least to the neighborhood of the identity, some neighborhood or small neighborhood of the identity here. And we obtain local uh, German identity to 3 5 distribution uh, on G, uh, which is obviously homogeneous because its symmetry algebra uh, is at least uh, this uh, the algebra A we started uh, with, or might be bigger. And might be much bigger. Uh, now, so as the equations about distributions induced by uh, by uh, and all the algebras. So as I said, uh, the not any characteristic matrix is realizable, but of course the zero characteristic matrix is realizable, and the most classical results uh, probably. I should write Cartan and Tanaka because in different directions they prove it, but uh, in different spirit, but the result anyhow due to them is as follows, can be formulated as follows. So take two three five distribution 
local German origin of R prime. And then the following statements are equivalent. Uh, well, so let's take the simplest and go five dimensional algebra. What is the simplest? It is one which is induced by the zero characteristic matrix. What does it mean, the zero characteristic matrix that we are dealing with uh, nilpotent uh, graded V algebra? But uh, I would prefer to say that the zero characteristic matrix is the same thing. So first statement that uh, D is equivalent to uh, a distribution induced by uh, with the zero characteristic matrix. Second, classical statement that it is equivalent to the condition that the symmetry algebra is 14 dimensional G2. Uh, uh, well, and uh, Cartan theorem, uh, it is so if, I don't, if the Cartan tensor uh, of the distribution vanishes at any point near the origin. Okay, so one of these items, one, two, three, can be taken at, uh, uh, as a definition of a flat distribution. I like this formulation of classical results because it's immediately leads to a question what can be said about homogeneous two, three, five distribution, which is induced by the five dimensional algebra, which there is zero for this matrix. And if it's not zero, of course, uh, zero is not unique. For example, can it be also flat uh, with this 55 distribution? If, what is it similar to algebra? I will give in my second lecture absolutely complete answers to all these questions. Uh, well, probably uh, there are people here who know that the quick answer to the first question cannot be flat <coughs> is yes, there are plenty, there are lots uh, of uh, 55 distributions induced by uh, homogeneous, uh, there, there are lots of end of five dimensional algebras with non-zero characteristic matrix, uh, which induce also a flat distribution. But it will be uh, later. Uh, so this theorem is uh, the most known theorem uh, for people who somehow deal <coughs> with that. And what is, <coughs> less known, but also extremely important theorem. And I think it can, should be a theorem to attribute it to Cartan. I have to speak with Dennis more attentively on that. He has some doubts. Uh, so maybe he Dennis implies that it's not completely Cartan. Dennis. Dennis is here. Hello. Hi. Hi. You agree that this theorem, that if D is not correct, everything is analytic category, it seems it has dimension not more than seven. So you said in your lectures that you are not sure that Cartan proved it completely, right? Well, I mean, he proved it within the context of his reduction method. And I mean, he, as in he's using bundle reductions okay. to do that. So, I mean, with that assumption, I guess, then yes, it's certainly attributable to, to Cartan. Um, uh, okay, so I will prove so this. I, I refer to these as like locally constant type conditions. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if you want to remove the, those types of conditions, then and uh, well, want to generalize it, it. It is easy to remove. Anyhow, okay. I will prove this theorem, uh, but I will prove it as a corollary of uh, a theorem uh, which you probably do not know uh, or not know well, but which, which is for me extremely important. I will formulate it later. Uh, so, but because that uh, the following theorem uh, that I obtained. Uh, Ah, okay, which implies theorem two. Okay, so theorem three, which implies theorem two, my theorem is as follows. So, uh, so let's consider non flat case. So, let's take a germ of at least three, five distribution, which is not flat at the origin. What can we say about azeotropy subalgebra at the origin of the symmetry algebra of G? Okay, so here I do not assume that D is homogeneous. I don't, I know nothing. Uh, no condition about the dimension of the symmetry algebra. I remind that as a trophy subalgebra of the symmetry algebra, and everybody knows that it's extremely important uh, uh, object, uh, consists, uh, so symmetry algebra is uh, the algebra of vector fields. We can consider it as an abstract algebra, or the algebra but after all, it's a algebra of infinite symmetries. Uh, infinite symmetries. Infinite symmetries are uh, vector fields. 
so there is the trophy subalgebra at a point and the origin, for example, uh, in subalgebra of those vector fields that vanish at the origin. Uh, so I have complete information about this subalgebra. Uh, well, both as uh, like an, if it is as an abstract real algebra or uh, real algebra of vector fields. Now today I need it only uh, as an uh, as an uh, to say about it what can be said about it uh, about the properties of algebra of the symmetry algebra as an uh, abstract real algebra. There are uh, three and only three cases uh, realize or each of them is realizable. The first A and B cases, so people well know. Uh, for example, they are realized for homogeneous uh, distributions. But there is one more case C, uh, where the isotropy is SL uh, SL two uh, uh, SL two. Uh, well, it's also possible. But in the case C, uh, it is realizable case C, but only when uh, the Cartan tensor at Z is equal uh, of the distribution at zero is equal to zero, which does not mean that it is equal to zero at other point. But if C, then it's a claim of the theorem, three Cartan tensor at D vanishes at the origin. So probably you agree that uh, theorem two, this theorem is a logical corollary of theorem three uh, and this Cartan Tanaka theorem one. Why? It is a logical corollary because assume that the symmetry of that contradiction that the symmetry algebra has dimension eight or more. So then uh, it's a zetropy is obliged to be SL2 uh, because in this case, uh, uh, Isotropy cannot be one dimensional or two dimensional because the dimension of the symmetry algebra is not bigger than five plus the dimension of isotropy. Uh, so if here is eight or more, then we have the only option SL2. But in this case, as I claim, claimed uh, Cartan tensor at zero is equal to zero. But also if we have uh, eight and here is SL2, uh, we have, uh, it is homogeneous case. It is homogeneous case, it is eight. Because the measure of SL2 is three. So in this case, uh, it is homogeneous. And if Cartan tells that zero is equal to zero, then, and here I'm using theorem one, uh, it is uh, equal to zero everywhere. Consequently, the distribution is uh, clear. And I assume that one. Okay, so it's a logical corollary. But, uh, but CRM2 itself, uh, uh, well, I thought about it uh, like Dennis, uh, like many other people all too much, and I uh, realized that for me that uh, it is a corollary of another theorem, which for me is a base theorem. Uh, so how I prove this theorem three, now theorem two reduces to theorem three, how I prove theorem three, uh, by the following statement, which implies not only CRM3, but implies a lot of more, and I will explain it. Uh, so for me, the CRM4, I call it for me, but it's personal name, the base CRM for non flat distribution, is as follows. So, as a tropic subalgebra of the symmetry algebra of any non flat 235 distribution, local, German zero, 235 distribution. So I'm claiming this theorem that it does not contain vector fields with the zero linear approximation. So the tropics of algebra, uh, internal symmetry vanishes as the origin, then they have well-defined linear approximation as the origin, but it might also be zero, a with a vector field. It must start with quadratic term. No, it's impossible. There are no, there are no, there are no such uh, infinitesimal uh, symmetries in the isotropic subalgebra, unless the flat case. In flat case, you all know that there are nine in, uh, such uh, linearly dependent symmetries. Well, but in non flat case, no. I am again here, I do not assume any homogeneity. It uh, it's concerns any non flat <coughs> two, three, five distribution. What follows from this theorem? 
because if we have, take azotropy, it's vector field which, van which vanish at the origin, <coughs> then the linear approximation, uh, of course, uh, they form a subalgebra of the azotropy, one jet at the origin of the uh, isotropy, and theory of four implies uh, that uh, uh, the whole of the tropy uh, is isomorphic to its uh, linear approximation as an abstract real algebra. It's very important, corollary theory of five. Uh, well, uh, and uh, later I will say much more about, uh, about it, uh, but now I need just this. Uh, and then uh, in order to, uh, to prove CRM3, which implies here in two, well, everything induces to investigation of the uh, of the linear approximation. It is representation. In fact, uh, one jet of the isotropy is a, it can be defined as a presentation. Uh, we have to understand this representation. So it is simple state. Well, uh, statement I am claiming that it is uh, that uh, in terms of this theorem, uh, then uh, the algebra of linear approximation is one of A, uh, B, C here, here, and this is a, but I have not proved the base theorem. It is not a simple theorem. Uh, it is not a simple theorem. Well, so in order to prove everything I said about, including Cartan Tanaka classical theorem and my base theorem, uh, so what I need, I need, uh, and it is, uh, and it is my way. I need uh, uh, three things, three very related things. I need a theorem, which explains the Cartan tensor of any two three five distribution D at a fixed point, which is turns out to be enormously simpler than uh, Cartan tensor at any. Point. Well, related thing is the theorem on what I call characteristic polynomial of D, which uh, is a generalization, three form of generalization of the Cartan tensor at a fixed point. And what is very much related to that is a theorem on almost exact normal form for all possible two three five distribution. By almost exact, I mean exact up to a finite group of polynomials. So this I uh, this I need. But uh, it requires certain uh, certain techniques uh, to do this, and I will do that. Uh, but to, to have an, uh, to give you an idea how how I am doing uh, A, B, and C, I will explain this A, B, and C uh, for uh, even more classical but much simpler problem: classification of local classification of Riemannian matrix and uh, uh, what is it, uh, Cartan? What is it, uh, the curvature, uh, the curvature test? So let us do this. I need this really not uh, because the testing is also very useful uh, as itself, but secondly, uh, I will do three, two, three, five distribution using exactly the, pre, the same approach. Here, everything is much simpler than for two, three, five distribution, but conceptually, I will do the same. So now my object is a local germ at the origin of RN of a Riemannian matrix. And I describe it by N by N matrix uh, whose entries are uh, functions. So for that, I take any uh, orthogonal basis for the Riemannian matrix, it's vector fields, V1, Vn, and I take uh, any uh, local coordinate uh, system. Then I have this matrix. Uh, so what I do, how I have this matrix, it's n by n matrix. Uh, so I express each of these uh, vector fields in these local coordinates, uh, write it as a, and write it as a column of this matrix. I am painting this way n by n matrix. Uh, now I want to give a new life to what is called, but not unfortunately, not very known what is called the Gauss uh, lemma. It is not formulated by Gauss in such a way, but de facto 
it is attributed to Gauss uh, because uh, the same. thing. Okay, so anyhow, uh, theorem. They exist suitable orthonormal basis and suitable local coordinates such that this method that, that describes the Riemannian method is as follows I is identity matrix and plus uh, n by n matrix A of X, which satisfies the following condition. It is symmetric and multiplied by the column X1, Xn, it gives zero identity. Uh, well, it is first statement. Second statement that this normal form is not almost, but absolutely exact up to, uh, up to this transformation, such transformation where R is any uh, constant orthogonal matrix. Well, and the short claim is that this metric is flat if and only if the matrix A of X in this normal form, in those conditions, is identically uh, is identically zero. Uh, well, uh, so what Gauss mentioned that these conditions, uh, these conditions, they hold. Uh, I'm saying here for suitable local coordinates, but I can replace the word suitable here by the word normal coordinates or geodesic coordinates. So this is what Gauss, well, that's why it's Gauss lemma. It's called, uh, uh, well, maybe we can formulate it not in such a way. Gauss has had many lemmas during his very long life at the time. He lived, he lived more than 80 years. Not bad without any vaccination. Okay, now I am. I will prove this theory because uh, my construction uh, of uh, Cartan interpretation of Cartan tensor and at its point and exact almost exact normal form uh, for two three five distribution, uh, the proof will be conceptually the same. So I will prove this theorem seven, and for this for the proving this theorem I. I use very big tool, which I, I call personally, but I think some other people can follow me, Poincaré uh, Poincaré uh, way. Uh, sorry, one question. Uh, what do you what mean it? by a but what, what, what do you mean by an exact normal form? I don't I don't I don't think I exact. Yeah, exact. By exact, form. I mean that take any two metrics and bring each of them to this normal form. These two metrics are equivalent if and only if the matrices in this normal form, A of X and A tilde of X for the other metric are related by this transformation. Well, no, I, 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 omit, I think that the term exact means that it is determined. Misha wants to say that yeah, it's yeah, yeah. determined up to this transformation. Okay, okay. So it, it directly follows from the Gauss lemma. It is Ga uh, yes, it is Gauss lemma. Yeah, right. But uh, thanks, but what I uh, what I want to do, I want to prove it without using uh, with using nothing. So I assume that I do not know. And in fact, uh, when I prove this, I did I did it so. What are geodesic? What is a uh, connection? What is the Riemannian uh, curvature tensor? I know nothing from the differential geometry. I want to prove. I want to prove this result. I want to prove this result because this is my way. I will use the same way for uh, two C five uh, this thing. So uh, I'm on career way. On career, on career did. Uh, well, a known resonance, resonance normal form for vector field, which is used in thousands, maybe tens of thousands of works in the 20th century uh, for dynamical system. And the fact one can way is used uh, in the whole local analysis as well as the physics. Unfortunately, so far, not many people are using it uh, for local differential geometry. And, uh, my mission uh, in this direction is to increase uh, the number of people who are using it. Because I think it is very uh, 
powerful uh, and gives a lot, and this is what my lecture is about. So I can express this matrix M of X, uh, uh, which describes uh, Riemannian matrix. Of course, I can write it in such a way, identity matrix plus matrix with homogeneous entries of degree one plus matrix with homogeneous entry of degree two and so on. Now, in this case, I do not want to pronounce high words about, about uh, uh, linearization of the action and the origin, let's say it in simple words. Assume that we have normalized this homogeneous parts of, uh, of the matrix M uh, or homogeneous degree less than K, and now we want to normalize homogeneous part of degree A. So what we do for that? We change local coordinates in this way. It is a vector function, homogeneous of degree K. So this change of coordinates differs from identity by degree K. But we also have a possibility, uh, have a possibility to multiply our orthonormal frame. It is not unique. Uh, transpose because it's, I want to write everything as a column. So we can multiply it uh, by an orthogonal matrix. So I write this orthogonal matrix in this way, exponent of a skew-symmetric matrix. And this skew-symmetric matrix will be also depend on x. So at point x is here, skew-symmetric, but it will be also homogeneous of degree k. Uh, so it is natural to do this uh, transformation. And it is clear that this transformation will preserve what we, by our assumptions, already normalized all homogeneous parts to degree K. And how the part, homogeneous part of degree K will change. It's very important that it will be changed in a linear way, namely in this way it will, it will change. Uh, this, here is the N by N matrix, which is the Jacobi matrix the matrix of first order derivative. And now in order to prove this CRM7, it, we have to prove at least the, the first statement of CRM7. So what is the first statement? This normal form, these two conditions of the matrix A of X. So uh, we have to prove that, so that, this, that the image of this operator has a complementary space, one of these complementary space that consists of symmetric matrix, and such that multiplying by the column X, it is zero. That's what have, we have to prove. It is uh, uh, just a great uh, statement, uh, which is uh, looks already, it's not absolute an exercise, but uh, uh, anyhow, I will prove claim eight. I will prove this claim, and particularly I approve the first statement of theorem seven, using it. <coughs> we can do it in some well, but I will do it immediately using what I call my GR in a product. In a moment, I will explain my GR. So let us, uh, you can do the simplest exercise immediately uh, for the inner product of polynomials, homogeneous polynomials just on one variable. So let's take the inner product. Here is coefficient A and B. So the inner product will be A, B, but what is very important is I factorial uh, here. And then you can immediately check this. That's why we need factorial. And it follows uh, that the conjugate with respect to this inner product, this factorial operator to the differentiation is multiplica multiplication by x. Of course, this inner product uh, can be naturally extended to vector functions, to uh, matrices with uh, homogeneous vector functions, and matrices whose entries are homogeneous uh, functions. We have to write I1 factorial, so on IN factorial. Uh, well, and uh, the, uh, I call it, it's my, because my personal definition, uh, I will be glad if somebody will follow me. I, I call it GR in the product because they were introduced by my first teacher, Genrich Vimesh Bulitsky. It's Russian name, a complete Russian name. It's a name and the name of father, Ruvim. Uh, 
uh, well, so GR are from here. Uh, well, and uh, Belinsky used them for normal forms for vector appeals, obtaining nice, nice results. They were appreciated by people, uh, but uh, there can be, I use using them too. In, in general, they are very useful. So, so we did the exercises, and I think that everyone here already did it orally. I uh, will believe that it can be, uh, we can write a explicit formula for this GR product in general case. And we have a similar thing that the operator which brings a homogeneous vector function to its Jacobian matrix if it takes this operator. Uh, so then the conjugate with respect to GR in a product of this operator is multiplication by of a matrix by X, which implies this claim and consequently it proves the first statement of the Gauss, uh, Gauss law. The remaining statement of the Gauss lemma. Okay, why we have this transformation? Because in this normalization procedure, we neglected so far the action of orthogonal matrices. Because uh, uh, we in the normalization, use transformation deeply from identity by continuous degree i, with i starting from one, but what about i is equal to zero? That's why we have this action of a matrix. Uh, and the constructed normal form is good, meaning that GR uh, in the product is good. And what I mean by good, that a priori, uh, why it should be a priori is that this normal form that we obtain, uh, that we obtain that it is invariant with respect to this transformation. So if we apply a constant orthogonal matrix to a matrix M of X, uh, sorry, here is a misprint. It must be A of X B. If we do it uh, and A satisfies these conditions, and then after transformations, it's, it's also symmetric and also this condition holds. Uh, so it is uh, it is some luck, one can say, because uh, we can take another complementary space to the linear parameters when it can, can is not so. But for the chosen complementary space, we get a normal form which is preserved by this uh, uh, transformation. No, the fact that it is flat if and only if this matrix is zero follows from uh, the statement that this is exact normal form. Maybe it's in my terminology of exact uh, should be different, but what I mean is that uh, uh, up to this transformation, the matrix A of X is unique. And why it is exact? It is also very important, uh, simple, but very important. The thing is that these operators that we used, uh, they, uh, for any case starting from Y, uh, they have no kernel except zero. The kernel is trivial. And from here, and start with uh, something start with related to one kernel method, it follows that this normal form is, uh, is exact. Uh, so if these operators for all K, for all K uh, would have, uh, uh, if the separators had uh, taking all k from one to infinity uh, altogether infinite dimensional kernels, then uh, this uh, normal form wouldn't be uh, exact at all. But uh, if, uh, if for some k we have non trivial kernel, for example, for k is equal to one or for k is equal to two, and for some uh, so, the, so the whole K together, the kernel is finite. Then it's, it is what I call almost exact normal form. So now let us see what happens for this. Uh, Nisha, so that, Nisha. Yeah. Can, can we ask you about this transformation? A affects go to where? And you this write power, something. Power of the normal matrices act. Yes, I mean, there's no A in the right hand side. So yes, it is misprint, I said. So it should be A and, here instead of M. Okay, and, and second, there's three R. Is it is it actually fine that there are three R? Three R? R and R and again R. Yes, R transpose. 
Then to matrix A, here is this ring, we substitute R, and here is R, yeah. Yeah, namely in this way. Namely this way. So, so you can share the- in, in linear approximations, you'll be cubic action. Or what? Right, right. Right? Okay. Hmm? Yes, because the, the, the R acts on not only on the matrix, but also on the, on the positions, on X. Okay, yeah. Well, so, so for non, uh, for non flat matrix, this decomposition of A, M, it starts with something. So, uh, so it is not simply I, otherwise it's flat. And now it starts with degree K, K plus one. So let's, let's K be the first uh, integer such that this part is not zero. And we have these two conditions, and they imply that this k is at least two. If k is equal to one, then these two conditions imply that it is zero matrix. So condition, uh, well, uh, I can say that uh, this starting a k of x is a characteristic matrix. And the minimal possible k is equal to two, then if k is equal to two, then uh, it can be identified with the curvature tensor at the origin. So I claim that, and it is known claim, in fact, global clearly, but it's uh, not, uh, not that known uh, that uh, the regular curvature tensor is uh, the first invariant with the concentration of two dreads of the Riemannian matrix. And here is it. It is this A2 that is fine with these two conditions uh, and defined up to this transformation of over. So, but it's very important just at the origin. So you see, it is much more simpler. Uh, the definition of the Riemannian theory. And if k is big here, here bigger than two, then the curvature tensor vanishes at zero, which doesn't mean in general that it vanishes at any point. So what I like about this proof uh, is that it can be uh, generalized with just few lines to, to other uh, objects, which are a bit more complicated, for example, conformal structures which are metrics defined up to multiplication by the vanishing function and where we don't now have geodesic coordinates but now uh, we had this operator uh, how it can be changed uh, so by now we can multiply by h so what we have to add to the operator is a homogeneous scalar homo scalar h is a scalar homogeneous degree k functions times identity matrix well, and then, and then immediately, this is immediate. So to these two equations, we have <coughs> to add one more equation, then trace of A is identically zero. Because this is a, how this part works when we take conjugate operator. And then again, we can define this in the same way, the same definitions, the characteristic matrix in, in, in homogeneous composition of A. Uh, so what this condition imply? Now we have one more equation. If n is four, then imply uh, that this matrix starts with homogeneous part of degree uh, two, it can be identified with the whale tensor. If n is three, uh, then it starts with terms of degree three. And this term, this part of coordinate part of degree three is the cotton tensor at one point. Well, if n is equal to two, then this condition implies that A of x is a zero matrix. Well, more than that, uh, Pamel gave uh, talks and asked questions about instant matrix. The same thing, we can do the same thing for instant matrix exactly the same, just to uh, replace in this Jacobi matrix uh, the last column of to put minuses in the last column of the Jacobian matrix. Uh, so this is not a symmetric matrix, uh, but will be an SO31 instead of, uh, instead of SO4. And trace, in the addition of trace, it's not the sum of, uh, of diagonal matrices of the first three units plus and the last by minus and, and then the same. Well, maybe we can answer some problems posed by Pavel. Uh, in his lecture, I do not know. But anyhow, you see that we have a straightforward with uh, generalization and then it's 
For example, what I asked to, for myself, is it possible to do a similar work for two, three, five distributions? And the first answer is no. The first answer is no, because unlike Riemannian matrix or non-conformal structure, we do not have this uh, situation when we have something fixed uh, of degree zero, so Riemannian matrix, uh, the fact is was identity matrix, and then we have arbitrary homogeneous sums of degree one, two, and so on. We do not have this situation uh, because uh, the condition that a distribution is two, three, five uh, is more involved. It, uh, it cannot be described in this way. But the second answer to this uh, question is yes, uh, because there is a very good word quasi. You must, then you not only so you know, and now I'll explain it and uh, uh, well, it is, it is something like for me, you know, uh, there are many people from Warsaw, so <laughs> maybe it is the first to say that uh, everybody knows uh, that uh, many results uh, on uh, and serious on RN and something else on RN can be uh, extended to Banach spaces, uh, uh, literally the same formulation and the, exactly the same proof, uh, provided that we uh, just replace the absolute value in the formulations and in the proof by, uh, by the norm, just put two bars more, nothing else, of course. Uh, you know, these are not the most important results in other spaces. Uh, but anyhow, there are such results, everybody knows uh, that. And this is the uh, same with the word quasi. So what is quasi homogeneity? It is convenient to define it uh, uh, using the older generalization of the older vector field. Sometimes this vector field is called the older vector field. And then uh, it is convenient to define just usual, uh, usual homogeneous function of the D by this equation, this older vector field applied to F gives GF. And in the same way, a homogeneous vector field V, it will, it's called homogeneous of degree D in the Lie bracket of P and V is D V. But attention, uh, uh, so in many cases, uh, uh, so people uh, are saying that uh, this monomial vector field uh, is homogeneous of degree sum of R i, but according to this definition, which is much more convenient, it is minus one, minus one, because of that. And now let us generalize this. Uh, let's put uh, weights. Here should be lambda one, it's in this bin, lambda one x one, lambda n x n. And now let's replace this definition E by E with this weights, lambda 1 and lambda n. And then the definition is the same. We repeat this definition, but we using instead of E, this E lambda. Uh, well, and then we are saying uh, that it is quasi homogeneous of degree D with respect to this uh, weight. So it's direct generalization. Uh, well, uh, for 2 c 5 distribution, uh, well, uh, I think everybody knows here that this has a natural uh, weight. So, uh, well, note that uh, with respect to this weight, there are non zero vector fields uh, on a five of any degree starting from minus three, d by dx4 and d by dx5, responding to this is the weights of x1, x2, x3, and x4, x5. So d by dx4, d by d by dx5 have weight uh, a homogeneous of degree minus three, d by d by x3 of homogeneous minus two, and d by dx1, d by dx2 of degree one, uh, of degree minus one. Well, and now what we need to use a the homogeneity is the theorem which I like very much. I believe that it is extremely strong theorem, Andre Belaisha's theorem. Unfortunately, Andre Belaisha left mass uh, something like 15 or not 20 years ago, but before that he had very good results, and I think this is the, one of his main theorems. It is extremely 
strong. So if you have mass and mass, it just runs with an owner of a shop in Paris near Notre Dame de Paris. Uh, well, theorem. Let, uh, consider any bracket generating tuple of vector field. John, that's the origin. You know. Any bracket generating, uh, not, reg not necessarily a regular bracket generating, not regular, whatever. Just bracket generating, meaning uh, that uh, uh, the we bracket, uh, bracket of sufficiently big uh, lengths of this vector field uh, cover the origin and the, the near the origin of the whole tangent space. So there, there exists in suitable local coordinates, we can express each of the vector fields of the tuple. I'm not thinking about the solution. The k tuple of vector fields in this form. So the homogeneous, now I will replace this round brackets by these brackets for quasi homogeneity of degree i. It can be expressed in this way, uh, in this way. So start, starting leading terms are quasi homogeneous of degree minus one and uh, higher order homogeneous of degree zero and so on. Uh, but what is the information? That there are no quasi homogeneous terms of degree uh, minus two, minus three, and, and so on, so on. Because it could be on Rn up to minus n. So we can kill by a change of coordinates, another formulation, we can kill all terms of quasi homogeneity minus two, minus three, till minus n. Well, but as soon as I speak about quasi homogeneity, I said to have to say about about the, the weights with respect to which this homogeneity and it is with respect to the natural weights defined by the growth vector of the tuple. I will not give definition, it's a bit any notation in general case, uh, but from what either you know or you will easily understand it from the following examples. Let's just take vector field V1 and 2 on at the origin on R2. And let's case take uh, just an illustration example, extremely degenerated case. When, okay, let's assume that the first vector field doesn't vanish at the origin, uh, and, uh, but and V2 at the origin is proportional to V1 at the origin, but not only V2. All repeated brackets of V1 or 2 of length, say, till 99 at zero are proportional to, to V1. So we have Taking all these brackets, we have only one direction, and the remaining second direction uh, is obtained by taking uh, one of the brackets of length 100. So in this case, the growth vector, I think you know what is it, is, uh, is this one very long because 100 will be repeated 100 times, uh, and the natural, this, this, this hint, people, natural weights are for x1 weight 1, for x2 weight 101. So I give you this example not only uh, to explain what are the natural ways, but also to underline that this Galicia theorem is very, very general uh, because uh, we do not assume any regularity uh, uh, in how many steps is being generated. Uh, in different, it can maybe break it generating in different ways in different points, so on. It's very general uh, theorem. And it allows us uh, to fix the starting point uh, for the framework, what I call one career way. So now I am turning to two, three, five distributions. And by Belisha theorem, so any two, three, five distribution germ of the origin can be described in this way. It's going to be decided by these two vector fields, uh, which, uh, whose quasi homogeneous decomposition in suitable coordinates start from quasi, from degree minus one, with respect to these ways, which everybody knows are natural for two, three, five distributions minus one, and then we have terms of degree zero, one, and uh, so on. Uh, and, uh, and uh, yes, we can do that. And then what can we say? That this, uh, from here it follows that this n1 and 2 of, uh, of uh, quasi commodities of degree minus one is a two, three, five distribution, and it is flat. And it is flat. And it is the coordinate, uh, coordinate realization 
book uh, what is called uh, the new portrait approximation of our two survival solution be another name symbol. So this is symbol in local coordinates and it is unique. It is unique up to a change of coordinates because it is unique because, uh, because flat distribution is unique because input and graded uh, algebra uh, five-dimensional input and graded algebra is unique. Okay, we can write it in different ways, uh, uh, in different ways, this n1 and 2 local coordinates, but after a change of coordinates, this part is good. Well, and now we are in the same framework, uh, at a starting point of the Poincare way. Now we will again, uh, now uh, all homogeneous, all round brackets, I will replay by these brackets, uh, uh, these brackets. Uh, uh, for quasi homogeneity in respect to this case, and I'll do the same what I did for Riemannian matrix. What operators in the case of Riemannian matrix, it was uh, uh, what was responsible for everything is uh, where is this operator? Is this operator? This operator was responsible for everything. Of course, this operator has a canonical meaning. It is the linearization of the <coughs> old Selga group of our transformation. So for two, three, five distributions, what is a Selga group, infinite dimensional group of all transformation? It consists of local diffeomorphism as a well change of coordinates, and, uh, and also non-singular two by two matrices with uh, functional entries. Which correspond because we can change the basis. We can multiply uh, v1, v2 by a singular matrix. Uh, because it's more singular, I put it here this, this sign. Uh, okay. Uh, well, and, uh, and we can take change of order. So this is how our pseudo group acts in the space of v1, v2, which describes. Uh, Two five distributions, what you call two three five distributions, and of course now I'm bringing this one current way uh, to more clever words. Of course, we uh, need the real algebra of this uh, of this infinite dimensional pseudo group, and what is the algebra? It's understandable. A vector field Z dot and the world field uh, corresponds to local diffeomorphism. And what concerns to non singular two by two matrix is uh, any, any two by two matrix. Let me take exponent. Uh, okay. So this is really algebra, such a pair, vector field and arbitrary two by two matrix. And, and, and now what we needed was uh, so what was this operator? The COVID matrix was uh, polyvalent matrix. Uh, it was uh, uh, simply, so we take. This n, now we take this n, the input and approximation, this part homogeneous of degree minus one. Like for even a matrix, we took the identity matrix. Uh, well, and, uh, and so we uh, consider this map. So our group acts on n1 and 2. So this is the orbit. If you take all possible, this fine h the single matrices, so this is the orbit. Uh, of uh, this is the orbit of flat distribution n and one and two. This is the orbit of the flat distribution, and we have to linearize this action as the identity. This map uh, we have to linearize as the identity. Uh, the relation is clear. So what corresponds to this part is the Lie bracket. What corresponds to multiplication by a matrix? A method, but here h. Uh, here h is arbitrary matrix. So again, this is the Lie algebra vector field z and arbitrary two by matrix x. This is the uh, linearization of the action of identity of this action. Uh, okay, so this pair z h gives us uh, two uh, vector vector fields. Uh, well, the tangent uh, the tangent space. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay, now we, we are doing exactly the same thing as with the Riemannian method. So, exa 
exactly the same approach, so we immediately get the same uh, the following result. So what can we do? Uh, well, so we have to take the uh, any a priori as we wish, right? We will discuss, but a priori as we wish, uh, complementary spaces to the uh, to the image of this uh, linear operator. Exactly like the moon. And so what we, we can do is to put uh, all this homogeneous part of degree zero, one, and so on uh, to these complementary spaces. So this, of course, the quasi-homogeneity respects the Lie bracket. If we have two vector fields, one quasi-homogeneity of degree uh, I and the other is quasi homogeneity of degree J, then, like for ordinary homogeneity, the early brackets will be of degree I plus J. So we have to restrict this operator to quasi homogeneity of degree I plus one. Uh, well, and then this N of degree minus one, that of degree I plus one. Uh, so we get uh, here and, and this part too. Uh, so we have from the homogeneity of degree i, uh, so that's why we have to restrict. And that's what can we do? Well, and uh, well, I tried to make the things in order not to spend more than one hour at a time, spend all time on the clock, I spend already uh, five minutes, six minutes more, but I started it because of technical problems. Anyhow, I, I think you will forgive me. So next time, what I'll do, I will work, I'll explain how to work with this operator. Uh, well, what to expect, because I will explain combinatorical problem, very simple. No, okay, then I immediately I will do exact normal forms, uh, forms, uh, uh, and implementation of a tan tensor at a, at a point, and then I will prove, uh, I will explain how to prove this, what I call the base, Theorem. So this theorem uses that. I'll explain also how to prove the Cartan theorem. Uh, so this uh, uh, this Cartan theorem. Uh, well, how in this language how to prove it? It will be. Uh, I'll explain up to calculations and. Calculations I'm ready to explain if in the video this is in additional meeting tutorial. Uh, well, uh, and but ideologically I'll explain everything that is simple, like everything uh, this work here. And then I will go to homogeneous distributions and we will explain uh, corollaries of this, uh, look, not linear corollaries, but how complete instrumentation of homogeneous distributions, both over C and over R, which is much substantially more difficult, uh, how it can be obtained uh, using this exact normal form. Uh, I'll, explain, I'll speak about my algorithm, I mean, program seven for computation of Cartan tensor in homogeneous distributions and uh, so I'll try also to do everything uh, all this uh, uh, I'm as I said, calculation of details and then how I'll do this. Okay, thank you for your attention. Since Dennis uh, used in his last lecture <laughs> much more time than one hour, then uh, probably you will not say that I am not polite if I will say that we have a few more minutes for questions and I would appreciate very much your question. Uh, Misha, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear very well, Bora. <laughs> yeah. I have a question about uh, CRM4, if you, if, if you scroll to it. Yeah. Yeah, it is very important for me, yeah. Uh, we have with Dennis a CRM, well, CRM, which more or less has the same context for a more general class of geometries. Uh, it, it, it encompasses a big chunk of parabolic geometries, in particular G2 mod P1. And yeah. the context is approximately the same. 
So if you if uh, there exists a symmetry with trivial linearization, then the geometry is flat. If there exists a symmetry with trivial linearization. Yeah, then it is flat. Yes, so that's a, that, that we proved for quite a general class of geometries. So in particular, all parabolic geometries, which are torsion free. Very, very good, very, uh, very, very, very good. But and, and how you proved it? So yeah, like G two T one is one example of, of, of this. Okay, but how you proved it? Uh, it's 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 a bit different technique. It's it, it's not uh, it's not like you do. Um, uh, it is uh, rather related um, to the ideas which uh, Andy Chap and Karik Melnik were using, uh -huh. uh, like considering how curvature propagates along certain curves. Ah, okay. All so right. Is, uh, okay, so, so it is. So in a sense, we still would be interesting to understand your result because yeah, it's, I mean, no, it's uh, not related. It's not related. Uh, how I prove it, but probably. Probably since your, your theorem is much more general than theorem for then, as it usually happens, the proof is simpler. The more general theorem, the simpler is the proof, right? Well, it's not very simple actually, uh, but I can send you reference. Yeah, very good. Very it's good. called send jet determination of something, of parabolic geometries. Yeah, yes. thank you so, so much. So, um, related to that, uh, uh, what I also know and what led me to some research about uh, also general uh, about all transitively algebras is that uh, the isotropy uh, is not only isomorphic as an after algebra for its linear approximation, but it is also linearizable. Complete isotropy is also linearizable, which for me, uh, at first glance, looks surprising because the linear approximation are, are extremely degenerated. Uh, well, for SL2, it's semi simple, it follows from Sternberg. Yeah, form. right. But by SL2, it's very it's classical. But for example, for Borja Dubrov case, uh, when we have, we have linear approximation x1 d by dx2 plus x4 d by dx5, it is extremely extremely degenerate. And if we add uh, arbitrary uh, terms, uh, nonlinear terms, uh, that uh, linearization requires vanishing identically five or six functions, uh, but some, some number of functions. Uh, well, but it is well, linear. What is the stabilizer? What, which, which, what is the stabilizer in the case? I didn't understand. Two uh, dimensions. What is what? Uh, isotropy. What is isotropy in this case you discuss? One dimensional, one oh, dimensional, one dimensional, okay. one yes. dimensional okay. vector field with linear approximation x2 d by dx1 plus x4 d by dx5. Is the one of the case? No, that doesn't follow from any theorem, right? So, so it's it's absolutely right. But it is for me it was extremely surprising. And then I got a theorem that a general theorem. Forget about any geometric uh, objects. Take any transitively algebra any transitively algebra. If it has one dimensional isotropy, then it's always linearizable, uh, whatever, whatever is it. And if it has uh, isotropy of dimension bigger than two, then I got very simple and very easy, easy, easy to check cocoological conditions. So it led me to this uh, uh, investigation yes, so, uh, in general. But after the worry, it, is, uh, it was surprising. And does it imply any actually if that linearization doesn't apply any claim uh, how the set of points where curvature vanishes actually behaves? Well, it should be right because you, it propagates along uh, symmetries. I'm it's, sure that uh, <clears throat> I'm I'm sure more that everything that can be said in my uh, sort of language. Uh, uh, well, implies uh, all this stuff about curvature, about anything, but uh, it requires work. Uh, well, so the advantage, uh, this is simple as you see, it's very simple. 
uh, approach, and, we, uh, and I have explained uh, what are the liver curvature tensor at a point, and even uh, this cotton whale tensors, uh, and uh, I'm almost explaining what is cotton tensor, just 12 minutes remains. Uh, so this topics, uh, which would, uh, uh, if, it, if it's not at a point, and, but in general, uh, explanation of that would take, uh, well, you know, well, how much time, half a year. Uh, well, but uh, the price for that is, is for this one point is both big and not. Uh, well, because um, renormalization uh, to have a germ at another point, it is related to some connection and so on, so on, so on. And about this, uh, I'm sure I can say that I'm sure that it can be done in this language, but I didn't. Do it. Okay. Yeah, good. What Borja is trying to understand? Uh, well, Misha, may I have a comment? Sure. Uh, there is a. Uh, I can probably have a comment. I can guess already that the book that you presented me uh, of one Polish mathematician, what is his name? You know, you can. Kiyowski. Yeah, so he has. Yes, the, Kiyowski. He has a, the same approach to. to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry that I don't know. Kiyowski does it only for, 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 for Riemann tensor, for, for, for metric. That's what Kiyowski does. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what Misha was doing. So, no, but Misha, Misha was just only show, starting with this simplest example of, 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 of Riemannian metric, but Jurek Kioski is doing it only for Riemannian metric. That's correct. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, yeah, so in this way, yeah, it's a very, very good book, and I appreciate very much that I have it as a present from Ibronica. Yeah, but, uh, but well, you see, uh, what, what I like uh, very much uh, is that uh, it can be extended uh, to conformal structure and to Einstein uh, stuff too. Literally, oh, well, just yeah. just adding this, just adding this condition that for mm -hmm. the for function that trace is equal to zero. You mm -hmm. so you know yeah. I, uh, no, I let me be honest. Uh, uh, at first I got this, and then I started to look Wikipedia and so on. What is it? Wait, and so on. Uh, but it's good to have uh, uh, in, in mind that you have a cut. Once you have a, a, a metric, then you have a canonical transformation from the tangent space at a given point to the neighborhood of the manifold, which is the X. It's a canonical transformation, and the only freedom. Con uh, connection, yeah, you mean connection, right? Not, not, not connection. The, the transformation X. Then, then you, ah, take it's a, it's you, take it. okay, yeah. you take a point that you take a vector tangent at this point, cool. and you just uh, uh, consider the connection, uh, um, the, the geodesic after uh, going in this direction from this point after time one. Then you get a point at the manifold. Yeah, okay, okay, no, I don't so, so it's a canonical it? transformation with just, uh, uh, gives you the transformation from the tangent space to the to the neighborhood at that point, and uh, then uh, the only freedom you are left is a linear transformations of the tangent space, and that's what you do here. Yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, I understand this. This is this is this is why. Uh, why I'm. This was for myself uh, to understand. Uh, or, other more complicated stuff. I know that it is Gauss lemma that it is uh, here the coordinates are geodesic coordinates. This is what Gauss lemma about. But but if you have a conformal structure, even a matrix up to multiplication of function, you do not have geodesic. Uh, so how, how are you dealing with this case? Yeah, no. But then you see what 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 is your freedom left? The, the freedom is just the the the. the um, how do you call them? Uh, multiplying by the number, the vectors by the number. So, no, yeah, but uh, but do you think uh, that? Okay, so do you think that this yes. theorem about a formal oh. structure and this additional condition on trace that is somehow follows immediately from Gauss lemma, or 
or not? Yeah, almost immediately. Uh, it's much, it's much more difficult the case which you are, which you consider because there you don't have such a, a clear freedom which, which back, uh, such a clear transformation from the tangent space to, to, the, to the manifold. And no, no, but, but, but again, it's, it's, it's much more water. It's much more difficult, you said. Yes, difficult. Yes, but from difficult. But you said just that it is that it follows also from somehow from no, the no, no. I, I mean uh, the 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 case you consider the lo local classification of the distributions then you have to consider the uh this group as as you described no yeah but 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 again so uh, no i am not saying that this uh, uh this is something uh, something evolution yeah but it is very simple and gives it gives me my way which can be literally generalized. But, yeah, yeah, but I I'm that, I so you think that analyzing the freedom of this operation multiplication of a matrix by a structure, you can get uh, without uh, from geode from geodesics normal coordinates this additional condition quickly, right or not? I think so. Well, I. I <laughs> Well, and what about Einstein metric or Einstein conformal structures when the same things up to uh, replacing some well, classes with minuses? The, the only difficulty is that uh, if you have, if your metric is not uh, uh, a Riemannian metric, but a pseudo Riemannian metric, then you have this uh, problem of, uh, of uh, parameterizing the geodesics. Once but it is exactly, a, so my impression, well, I'm, uh, you know, I know differential geometry much less than many people here in particular. In the light cone, you, you do not have, uh, uh, you have only a conformal parameter. So uh, I'm sorry, uh, um, a fine parameter. Uh, that's okay. that's only the difficulty, but probably it can be also. Um, <coughs> no, well, well, uh, well, you know, well, probably, probably you are right, but uh, but I am not sure that it is one word like here. Here, I proved everything. You agreed. Uh, you agree. Yes. I, I have completely yes, proved agree. this normal form mm -hmm. uh, in five minutes. Uh, I am not sure that it will take just uh, two, okay. two three slides uh, well, to, to prove it in another language. Well, but but of course, I am not. I am not saying that I am uh, smarter than Riemann uh, or. Or no, I do classical or or classical or No, I I I'm not. I, I'm not claiming this. Main thing I I needed and I decided to do to this lecture is because it gives uh, the approach. Yes, to to, to your I, problem, which is much more difficult. That I understand, of course. Can I ask the question now? Uh, yeah, actually, sure. It's not a question. It's it's my 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 desire to, to yeah. see something next next time. Apart, I, I understand what you say, and I just follow your your abstract story. But can you make kind of starting next time make some kind of tutorial, starting with some let's say homogeneous two three five distribution in some local coordinates? Try to make your normal forms just. On a on an example, how it works step by step. No, but, uh, uh, but I, I of course I, I will do it in the second lecture. I you will because uh, because you will, time... you will give us you will give us a, some example that I see on step by step how it works. You will see lots of examples. Okay, and very so, good. So you will see lots of concrete examples in coordinates. Lots. And very simple. No, but I, I don't. I, I I simply want to see how 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 the procedure like coming from step k equals I will, I will, two I, goes to k equal three. I would like to see. I will. And, and I will I would, go, like, I would like to see your calculating the freedom. How I calculate how many variables. Yeah, I will. There. I will explain everything uh, next lecture and uh, what I'll have calculations that I will not have time to explain if there will be 
uh, people who are interested, at least one, you, for example, Paul, me, then for example, yes. I, will be, I will be happy to give a tutorial on detailed calculation with all the techniques. Yeah, I, 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 saw, I saw it already three times, but I would like to see it the fourth time, you know. I'm ready to show you 10 times or more. Okay, very good, very good. So he, he, there are still questions here from Zhang Chi Chen. Uh, so he says, I have a question. Do you have a complete list of all non-zero characteristic 3-5 matrices giving flat to 3-5 distributions? Yes, so I you... have it. I, have, I will show it. I have all and not only, not only over C, but also over R. So quick, quick answer to that. So it's very important what I call, uh, what I call, uh, uh, what I, uh, what, I, what I call five three zero distribution, five three zero involved algebras, meaning uh, five five three zero meaning that the square of five dimensional algebra uh, is uh, uh, three dimensional and uh, is three dimensional and abelian. The square of the square is zero. That's what I call that's I call five three zero algebra. So the the most important, and I can do it nicely. It can be done in many ways, but I can do it nicely is classification of all generating plane uh, in five three zero algebras. And five three zero algebras is described just by three by two matrices, what I call reduced characteristic matrix. And then knowing the classification, and it is very simple. No, after I, I arranged it, after arranging the required work, uh, to be very simple, uh, so it immediately uh, follows all classification of all uh, characteristic uh, matrix, uh, matrices. But, but the main thing is that, that we do, I can classify all, I will answer completely this question, but we do not need all, we need just small part of them because uh, uh, because a lot uh, of endog five dimensional algebra induce homogeneous distribution uh, with symmetry al algebras of dimension uh, six, seven uh, of flat. A lot. And, we, ha uh, and uh, we can take some, just few of them in order to realize uh, this homogeneous cases with uh, symmetry algebras of dimension. <laughs> six and seven, just few of them. Well, and the remaining ones uh, should be uh, such that uh, induced uh, distributions has the same five dimensional all the algebras. More or less similar body of the world gas, but now I'm doing it not on the C, but over R and in a different way and simpler. Uh, well, and uh, well, for example, example of results of like this. Take any end of five, three, one, zero algebras, meaning that the square of the algebra is three dimensional, the square of the square is one dimensional, five, three, one, zero. Any of this end of algebra uh, induces a distribution either with seven dimensional symmetry algebra or flat. Mm -hmm. I will speak about that. But the, but the, but the, but the question of Zhang Chi Chen just quick answer is that you, you can give the most general form of this matrix, this three, five, five, three, three times five matrix that gives the flat distribution? Can ah, most general form without a list. That's what he was asking. No, it is, uh, I can, but it is, uh, will be meaningless. I can write the Dracobi identity, just write the Dracobi, uh, uh, put, uh, uh, well, I, everybody can, can but uh, what for? The main I thing is know. to classify. This Zhang Chi Chen, are you, are you happy with the answer? Yeah, yeah thank you. I'm uh, satisfied with the answer. I, I understand that uh, some small part is enough. Thank you. No, just, you know, this all other structure equation follows from Jacobi identity, but there are Jacobi identity between A3 and 4 and 5, and, and uh, a part of Jacobi identity which requires certain relations uh, for that. Just put here arbitrary this parameter as I wrote numbers. Uh, and uh, and write down all the Jacobian identity. You will uh, you will obtain some relations uh, between between these 15, 15 numbers. It will be not nice formulas, uh, but uh, <coughs> you can do it easily. Uh, but what for? 
I mean, because because you have a correspondence between these matrices, character matrix, and the and your distribution. So I'm I'm trying to understand. <coughs> yeah, but everything is up to equivalence. Yeah. This characteristic matrix uh, uh, it depends on a basis a one and two. If I change this basis a one and two, I change this matrix. Yeah. So in the space of this three by five matrices, X G L two. It is a simple action by formula, simple action. Uh, but since everything is to equivalence, up to equivalence, we have to, uh, the true problem is to classify all these three, five, five, five matrices with respect to the action of GL2 related to the possibility yes, yes. of changing basis in one and two. Well, it is, it is some linear algebra. Uh, well, I, I, well, could be some involved exercises, exercise, but I did, I did it completely. Okay, thank you. I'm satisfied with this answer, and thank you for Lyoski for asking this question for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Misha, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Thank you for the talk. Um, I was wondering if I could talk to you about the um, uh, example where you have uh, isotropy SL2. Um, have you examined, yes. I guess, two questions? Yeah, so one of, one of your cases is where the isotropy can be related to this theorem, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah. So in the SL2 case, I guess, uh, two questions. Do you do you have, um, I guess, a classification result of like the, the degree of generality of like, have you have you classified up to local equivalence um, the the cases where you have isotropy? Yes, SL2? I have complete classification of okay. all isotropy subalgebras as as algebras of vector fields with respect to local diffeomorphisms, this is it is rather simple. Okay, so uh, so second question, I guess. Um, so for these examples with uh, isotropy SL two, um, so, so your carton, you, yeah SL two. So your your Carton tensor, as you mentioned just down below there, the Carton zero tensor zero. vanishes at zero. So if I move off of the origin, do you have any constraints on the? Do you know any constraints on the type that can arise? The, yes. the the root type. Uh, yes. Uh, so, in this example, so we can take a distribution this this isotropy SL two at the origin. It's a very good question, Dennis. Mm -hmm. And uh, away from the origin, yeah. And uh, as a generic point, there is a, some kind of point, as, as a generic point near the origin. Uh, this example uh, will uh, will give you uh, will give you Cartan tensor uh, u, u one squared u two squared and the symmetry algebra will be six dimensional. So type symmetry D, algebra type will be will be two times SL two. Uh, well, I don't remember o, o, okay. over R. Okay. I have it over R, but over C, the answer is sure, over C. So, uh, overseas answer is the following. In this example with the SL2 as, as a trophy at the origin, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, as a generic point near the origin, uh, the symmetry algebra, six dimensional symmetry algebra SL2 plus SL2, mm -hmm. direct sum, this Cartan tensor u1 squared, u2 squared. So uh, the double root, uh, yeah, yeah, two pairs of um, double roots. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, great, thank you. I will explain it in details uh, like, uh, like that. The yeah, thing is great. that in my interpretation, Cartan tensor is a, a homogeneous degree to polynomial. Uh, well, generalized, what I call generalized Cartan tensor is uh, is a homogeneous polynomial of five variables, a quasi quasi homogeneous <laughs> polynomial of five variables, which belongs to a certain ideal. Yeah. Uh, well, and this uh, ideal is preserved after. Uh, under, no, okay, no, probably I cannot say it in one word. I will explain it next time. Uh, it is. It is an. It's a nice example. By the way, I can, due to this example, I have very. Uh, simple normal form, uh, very simple uh, for uh, for a distribution uh, with uh, six dimensional symmetry algebra SL2 plus SL2. 
because you know mm. people like to have very compact normal form for that uh, they do it in monge, monge form you know yeah yep yeah. 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 well but uh, but for for several dimensional algebra it's simple to do it in monge form just uh, of that distribution is z prime is y double prime squared and, and then y double prime to r with some restriction to r not necessarily integer uh, but for six dimensional algebra i haven't seen uh, this normal form in most terms but i can do it uh, it's very simple and it is related to exactly to that it's an important question okay thank you and so in in this uh, sl2 isotropy example so what is the uh, uh, like the set of points where the uh, uh, Cartan tensor is zero is what it's could I mention one or what what is the code yeah it is uh, it is a uh, singular singular could mention one variety it is uh, uh, where the coordinates x1 x5 it is x1 x x1 times x4 no x1 times x5 minus X two times X four equal is equal to zero. zero. So it is diffeomorphic. The set of singular points is diffeomorphic to what I said. But out, out of this set, the Cartan tensor is a square of is out is, of that it is SL two plus SL two. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, so I mean, so it will be, uh, it is recorded, uh, and so I do not need to send you a file uh, of today, or, mm. or I should. Yeah, it's, it's better if, if you send it, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but I'll send to, uh, yeah, yeah. To, all, to, all, to, all, to all listeners. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I just I, had one other question that if, if in, is this, have you, is this like a, uh, is there a uniqueness for this model that you're giving, or uh, it's just, one example that have this problem. Which, which model? This singular mm. one that has SL2 uh, at, at, at this hypersurf. At this no, it is just one example. Uh, it is. Oh, okay. Uh, well, it's a good question. Uh, well, no, there are many, not a single, there are many examples, infinitely many, uh, infinitely many examples, but. Uh, 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 but I can extend your question to deeper. So, all the, I am not sure, but it seems that all these examples in case C can be uh, can be described by a one-parameter family with a modulus. Mm -hmm. Because you know the symmetry algebra SL two plus SL two, it's unique. But what is important, uh, and it is my way, is to study and symmetry algebra. So. Like in seven dimensional algebra and in SL2 plus SL2 and its real form. Uh, so we have endorsed, uh, we have generating plane. I said, what is sub algebra and generating plane? So all together is what I call endorsed algebra. And endorsed algebra is, is as a Lie algebra is SL2 plus SL2, but as a DOM algebra, there is a modulus. A model, uh, a real parameter, a complex parameter, which parameterizes the equivalence class. So saying that uh, for seven and six dimensional algebra, it is uh, the seven sort of solvable seven dimensional algebra, then SL2, SL2, and also Borja Dubrov case, it's to me, it's not complete information at all, because uh, what is important is. Uh, and don't and, and don't symmetry algebra. I, I defined it in five dimensional case. Uh, next time I'll define it uh, in case of dimension bigger than five. And as in don't symmetry algebra, in seven dimensional case and in six dimensional case, but not Boris case, uh, there is uh, there is a modulus to the equivalent classes. In Boris case, uh, it's not so. There is no modulus. There is only one case over C and two cases over R. 
and this but is I'll again, this, uh, just I'll to repeat I'll what explain this, this, uh, your, your questions. Uh, just to repeat what Dennis said. So you have it's it's clear like what uh, the you know how many how large this modular is going to be, uh, or is it is it not known how large this the class of such examples? Well. At least what I know definitely is that in this case, <coughs> there is a one parameter family of homogeneous distribution with uh, each with symmetry algebra SO2 and SO2, and the parameter is a modulus uh, of the equivalence classes. That's I know definitely. Uh, whether this family that I will explain next time, this one parameter family gives you all cases C or not. About that, I don't think. I am not sure. So, why you call it in doubt? Maybe just generated by two. I don't know. Why, why is this? Why two? you call it how? how? Like this algebra, so why you call it in doubt? I mean, is it just uh, algebra gener with two generators? I, I, I'm not sure. Oh, why, what? Okay. No, okay. Uh, it is an algebra and doubt with a t uh, generating two plane. But instead of seven words, I am using two words and don't algebra. You're against? Why well, it's not just generated by two? Anyway, okay, it's well, only one word. Well, but it's, but it's, it's just uh, words. Generated with two generate algebra with two generators. I mean, why? It's algebra. Well, with two but no, it why is not uh, for me. It's sometimes because. Uh, these generators are not unique and generating plane is uh, and to play generated to plane is uh, is unique okay but so, uh, but but like what well, in general it's maybe very stupid question so what, why you think that like a like in general homogeneous models then they're not left invariant distributions of some five dimensional. Oh, very, very good question. I proved, and this was my very important question for myself, uh, <clears throat> that over C, any homogeneous distribution is left in variable, uh, left in variant. It is induced by some and of five dimensional algebra. Over C, oh, over see. R, unfortunately, it is not so, and it is not so in three and only three cases, when the symmetry algebra is SO3-1. Mm -hmm. First case, when it is SO3 plus SO3, including uh, this total in both in the second case. And the third case, it is when it, it is uh, uh, Euclidean uh, transform, uh, transformations, uh, the real algebra of Euclidean transformations on R3. All, uh, all these cases are real in complex case uh, over c it is always so but and, it's uh, like case by case i mean it's just this fact is for this particular two three five distributions right i mean uh, we are said. also a good uh, also a good question uh, because after that i attacked which took me a lot of time so the question the same question about in general about uh, any transitively algebras and uh, and I did it completely it's a lot of job case by case okay in uh, for all transitive algebras on R3 related to R3. Okay. Are published, so on and in uh, and there I proved that there is only one transitively algebra over C which doesn't have this uh, property over mm -hmm. R there are lots because uh, over R we have SO3 without any uh, we have SO3, uh, so the small dimension, the difference is that uh, we have SO3 over R uh, and and we have, uh, and it is as a morphic over C2, SL2. Uh, well. Okay, uh, yes, I mean, it's 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 maybe lower dimensional phenomena. Just. Yeah, no, no, no. Because I other, not, otherwise, uh, why we need all this theory of homogeneous spaces anyway? Okay. Uh, why? Because uh, uh, because where you described your homogeneous distribution as left invariant induced by and induced by five dimensional algebra, so then you have a lot of possibility uh, 
uh, to work with it. In particular, it is you can immediately write normal form and so on, so on. And uh, no, I meant like uh, okay. Anyway, thank you. No, well, I'm not. I'm not saying that it is the only way to describe distribution, but it's it looks for me that uh, uh, it gives you many, many, many possibilities. Okay. It, it depends what you want at the end of the day. Uh, it depends. For example, if you want to describe your distribution by vector fields, it, uh, either, either in the simplest form, uh, how much uh, race it takes to write them, like Munch form, or, or in some other form, for example, by linear vector fields, or in the form such as the symmetry algebra, is described by nice vector fields. There are, you have to decide what in this case. So this is. Uh, left invariant distribution have a big advantage. For other purposes, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe to, but, but I, think, uh, I think it's a good way. But in general, my way, my uh, resolution is adopt algebra of dimension O5 or more. So this is true normal form. After that is uh, something like qualified integration, you know, you can write uh, an integral of uh, um, dx times square root of x squared minus one over square root of x four, um, mm -hmm. uh, or you can ask mathematical and do it yourself to write it as an explicit formula, which will take, uh, uh, which will take uh, half, uh, which will take uh, one page, if not more. Mm -hmm. What is better? Uh, depends on what you want to write. Uh, sometimes to live on integral, it's better. Mm 